Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Friday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop is Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Six inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. Some attempts are in the low 20s right now. And let's look at some of the, uh, the cameras. Yep, snowing and blowing here. An exceptionally windy day for Wyoming, Montana, and also Colorado. As this storm system, jet energy and a tight pressure gradient cross the Rockies today. I've got a really good stretch of snow for the Tetons. Pretty direct flow, good ore graphics and lift all the way through Christmas. And we'll look at that forecast coming up. I want to go to radar across the west right now. So there's our push. There's our wave and storm system with jet stream um, escorting all of this moisture into the west. Both rain and snow, depending on elevation. Um, here's water vapor satellite imagery, another very clear graphical representation here of the flow with all this moisture just being directed into the west. You can see the wave cloudiness blowing off the front range of uh, Colorado. So we're just, again, we're just creating uh, a lot of lift over the mountains with this very strong um, jet stream. And I also have snow for the central and northern mountains of Colorado, especially right up on the Continental Divide with this strong wind and this tight pressure gradient. We'll look at that forecast coming up. I want to show you the uh, my bullet points. A lot of important things to talk about. So windy Friday, very windy Friday. Here are the rain snow lines, pretty low. Great to see this in the Pacific Northwest, two to 3,000 feet up there around Stevens Pass. Crystal, so we should accumulate some good snow over the next few days. Um, Idaho, five to 6,000 foot rain snow line. Utah and Colorado. I mentioned this the last couple of days. This is going to be an issue. It's still very warm because the cold air cannot make it into Utah, Colorado because you're, you're really out of the main. The, the storm track is just to your north and so that doesn't allow a lot of the cold air to filter in. So 9 to 10,000 foot freezing levels there. Montana, Wyoming set up to 7,500 feet at times. Alright, this is a bit of good news. I am seeing in the last 24 hours, some improvement in the longer term snow forecast for some key locations. I've been getting emails, people concerned about vacations and trips coming up from Christmas through New Year's into January. I'm seeing the numbers tick up, but the temperatures look to be warmer than normal throughout the entire period through a lot of Utah and Colorado. So that's not good, but the numbers are there. Veil 10 inches over the next 15 days. That's not spectacular. Obviously, that's a problem. Um, but that's up a little bit from what we were looking at yesterday. Snow mass is at about 16 inches. Park City is at about 14 over the next 15 days. Alta looking at over 2 feet. That number's up, certainly. Um, now, what we really need in parts of Utah and Colorado are at least two major storm systems to really get things back to where they should be because we're way below where we should be. In some cases, feet of snow below where we need to be. So we need at least two major storm systems um, in the next probably two weeks. Here are the best odds of snow. Um, the best dates, in other words, for accumulating snow. So for example, in Colorado, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, light to moderate accumulations. In some cases, right on top of the Continental Divide, Loveland, Winter Park, A Basin, Keystone, uh, up to Rocky Mountain National, we're going to squeeze out some pretty decent snowfall, but very strong winds. So that's going to limit probably a number of resorts uh, to, to even function because it's going to be so windy up there. Um, but this is a different wind event. When you look at Colorado specifically, this is not like Thursday or Wednesday's um, wind event. That one was much more widespread. This one's going to be much more confined to Boulder West, to up into the foothills and the Continental Divide. So this one's going to, it's going to be quite different than what we dealt with on Wednesday. But if you live up there in the foothills, in the front range high peaks of Colorado, you'll feel it. Um, and in Boulder. Light to moderate accumulations 1225, light to moderate accumulations 1226. You can see what happens in Utah, light to moderate this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, moderate to heavy 2122, and moderate to heavy afternoon 24 into Christmas Day. All right, let's talk about uh, the forecast radar. So this is effective starting 11 a.m. Mountain Standard today. You can see this push of moisture 
again, just, just, you know, that storm track is just to the north of Utah and Colorado. At times, yes, there will be waves of moisture and high winds that make it into both areas. It's just not consistent. Let's look ahead on this. Let me push this ahead into time. Okay, so there's 5 p.m. All right, here we are. This is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday. Here's what I was talking about. So you've got a wave and wind moving through the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado. At 11 a.m., it's still there. Very high winds. And then it starts to dry up. Again, these waves, they come and go, and then they dry up. And then you can see where it's, it's still snowing right there, raining and snowing across a lot of the, uh, the high Sierra. All right, here we are. This is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday. So another wave brushes the Wasatch, brushes the central and northern mountains of Colorado, but it's more direct up here into Idaho and the Tetons. All right, here we are. This is 5 p.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday, December 21st. This is late. There's early. That's 5 a.m. Monday Mountain Standard. You can see where the direct flow is right up there into uh, the Tetons, parts of Idaho, at times, again, brushing the Wasatch. The flow is just not letting the cold air dip south. It just doesn't go as deep into Utah and Colorado. Um, there's our final. There's 11 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard on Monday, December 22nd there. And again, the flow is really directed up here, at times, brushing the Wasatch. All right, let me show you the, um, let me show you a time height. For This may help to kind of show this. So Loveland Ski Area, a slice through the vertical atmosphere. There's the current moment. You go in this direction for three days into the future. So this is a 72-hour forecast, roughly. So good batch of moisture right here, good batch of moisture right there. Effectively, what we're looking at is a bit of a west-northwest wind flow, helping to squeeze this out. Um, and you can see the, so that's, what is that, roughly um, the 20th, throughout the 20th, late into the 20th, and then again coming in on the 21st into early on the 22nd. So there's a couple different waves of, of moisture. And these winds, you can see the wind barbs, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 mile an hour winds. Very strong winds. So you effectively have a west-northwest wind at, at a very high velocity uh, helping to squeeze out some of the snow up around Loveland, A Basin. And you could, you could potentially see three to eight inches of accumulation just from this flow, just from these packets of energy coming in with this very strong wind over the Continental Divide uh, in Colorado. All right, let's look at the, uh, the atmospheric pressure anomalies up at about 18,000 feet. So this is Saturday. The 20th, there's your storm, there's your storm track right there. Look at the ripples along this flow. The tight pressure gradient, the jet stream, the strong winds. It's a recipe to squeeze out snow over the Continental Divide of Colorado for sure. All right, this is Thursday, so this is Christmas morning. Massive high pressure ridging, higher than normal pressures to the east, including a lot of the, uh, the Rockies, but look at the drop in pressures here to the west. Um, so cold and snow for parts of the West Coast, California, the Pacific Northwest, BC, Idaho, Montana, and probably Wyoming. At times, you might see a wave come through the Wasatch in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Guys, this is something else right here. This is Wednesday, so this is New Year's Eve. <laughs> if this happens, I mean, this is one of the biggest high pressure. These are seriously... These are seriously high pressure anomalies. Uh, these tans, these browns, I mean, that's three standard deviations above the norm. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see anything close to that. This is a comparison for the same day. So I showed you this one. Here's the AI interpretation. It's not nearly as strong, but it does have high pressure ridging. A bit of weakness here over some of the Rockies and up in the Pacific Northwest. In this case, you would much rather see the AI 
versus the operational for the West. This would be devastating if this plays out. Devastating. Um, it'd be warm and dry, in other words. Let's look at seven-day total precept. So this takes us all the way, essentially, through Christmas. Heaviest precip is up and down the West Coast with a trajectory into the Tetons, Idaho, Montana, at times brushing the Wasatch. And there could be at least an inch um, with the type of strong wind and aura graphics. It's just not going to be all that cold for the Wasatch. And then again, you've got a bit of that making it into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Here's 10 to 1 snow, same, day, uh, same seven day period. So deep purple's at least six inches, bright pink's at least a foot, and the whites, that's at least two feet. So you've got that Pacific Northwest BC, interior BC, parts of Idaho, certainly the Tetons, parts of the high Sierra as well. Especially once we pull in some colder air, you'll see that in the extended forecast. In the, the Wasatch, it gets close, not quite to white. Definitely some bright pinks. That's a simple 10 to 1 again. Let me show you my official forecast. So this is all of 1219 today through the close of business on 1223. What do we got? 6 to 10 inches over the top. Well, as low as 3 in Park City, Deer Valley because of the warm air. That's going to be one of the issues with this. Again, just warmer than it should be in Utah and Colorado through this period. The warmth in the, uh, the, in the Sierra will be an issue early on as well. And then, you know, your best snow is to the north of this line because that's where you're going to have some of the colder air. So, you know, 10 to 20 inches up here on top of what you've already received for the Tetons. You've got, what is this, 6 to 12 up here in the parts of Montana. 4 to 12 up here in the parts of Idaho. Pretty good numbers up here in the interior BC and still looking at quite a bit of snow up here. The bright pink again is at least at least a foot. So you got a lot of that. So that's period one. Let me show you period two. Look at this. So this is 1224 through 1227, through the close of 1227. And once we pull colder air into the Sierra, you can see what happens. The numbers go way up. I mean, you've got the whites coming out, and that's over two feet. Uh, looking at basically two to four feet here across the high Sierra. Great period. The numbers are trending up during this period for a lot of the Wasatch. Looking at potentially at least a foot or more. Uh, through a lot of the Wasatch, even Brian Head gets in on this. And I think the western slope would be favored of Colorado through this period, with potentially 6 to 12 inches during that period. Another foot for the, uh, the Tetons, um, and potentially three, 3 to 6 up there, Montana, Idaho, and still good numbers through B.C. and the Pacific Northwest during that period. I mean, you can kind of see what happens. The pattern dips and we start to see energy kind of run through this area. All right, let me take it back. So there's your contrast, 1219 through 1223, and then 1224 through 1227. All right, let's check out the northeast. Um, so seven-day total snow. Got some deep pinks there. That's at least six inches. Bright purple or bright pink would be a foot. Might do that over uh, J Peak. There it is again. Here are my numbers. So through 1227, the close of business on 1227, there's your foot over J Peak. I've got eights at Stowe, Tremblant, Whiteface, Snow Ridge. We'll probably get a little bit of lake effect mixed in in Mount Washington. Everybody else is probably three to six during that time period. And there is going to be some rain that mixes in at the base areas at times. All right, let's go back to the big map. Uh, today through the 23rd, you can see the effect. What you see here in Colorado a lot of that, again, is that west-northwest flow, and there are going to be some potentially bigger numbers mixed in. I mean, I've got five in Loveland, but that could easily be six or seven. Winter Park could be higher than that, depending on the exact wind direction with this, with this wind event. So, I mean, there are some positives to this pattern, but there are also some negatives. The warm air, exceptionally strong winds over the higher terrain, 
it's going to make it tough. But there are some positives. I mean, look at the Tetons, Idaho, uh, Montana, the Pacific Northwest. BC continues to be strong. So we'll see. We'll see how all this plays out. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.